It is very important to assess the level of damage prior to starting a repair because the level of damage will determine what techniques and products you will use to complete the repair. Levels of damage break down into five categories. First, damage through finish layer, color layer, and into substrate. Second, damage through finish and color layers, but not into substrate. Third, damage through finish layer, but color layer was not affected. Fourth, damage into but not totally through finish layer. Fifth, light damage into finish layer. Color theory is very important to technicians who will have to match the color of repaired areas to the original finish. This is not intended to be an all-encompassing discussion of the subject, but rather a short lesson in the basics of mixing pigments. The basics, however, will give you a strong understanding of how to make the necessary matches. First, some terminology. We'll begin with primary colors. The primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. They cannot be obtained by mixing any other colors. All other colors are made from these three plus black and white. Secondary colors are made from mixing theoretical equal amounts of two primary colors. Orange, green, and violet are the three secondary colors. We refer to the equal mixture of the primary colors as theoretical because, in the real world, it's hard to mix exactly equal amounts of any pigments due to intensity differences, weight differences, the amount of pigment versus the amount of solvent in any given colorant, and so on. There is also a question as to which blue or red or yellow is exactly the right one. However, the theory still works. When you mix red and yellow, you will get a shade of orange. Of course, if you add more red than yellow, you'll get red-orange, or in other words, an orange that has more red in it than yellow. Colors like red-orange that are not true secondary colors are called intermediary colors. Certainly, there are far too many possibilities to list. How does this help you match colors, you may well ask. Let's suppose you have tried to match a given color, but when you look at the target color, it appears to be more orange than what you've mixed. If you have it, you can add a touch of orange. If you don't have orange, based on color theory, you know you can add red and yellow to make the match. Sometimes it's easier to match colors by working with the complementary colors. Complementary colors are located directly opposite of each other on the color wheel. For example, the opposite of red is green, so green and red are complementary colors. A very important fact of color theory is that complementary colors reduce the brightness or intensity of each other. That is because, theoretically, all colors mixed together end in gray. You may have noticed that the complementary color of any primary color is the secondary color between the two other primary colors. Therefore, when mixing complementary colors, you are mixing all colors. So when mixing complementary colors, you are reducing the intensity of the strong colors to a gray. It should be noted here that mixing all three primary colors will actually yield a brown shade due to the fact that it is not so easy to get perfect colors in perfectly equal intensities. Still, the system will work to help us adjust colors. Let's take an example. The mixed color is redder than the target color. In order to make the mixed color less red, or in other words to neutralize some of the red, we'll add the complementary color of red, which is green, or one could say blue and yellow. Notice that the red was diminished by the green and that the colors now match. Soft fillers are used in low traffic areas where very little touching or contact with moisture takes place. For example, soft fillers are not appropriate to repair a dining room tabletop, however they are perfectly acceptable on the legs of the same table. Wax sticks are semi-soft fillers that are relatively easy to use. Before starting your fill, make sure the damaged area is clean and trimmed. Use a knife or scraper card to scrape out any loose splinters and cut out any splinters that are sticking up higher than the surface of the wood. Be careful not to scratch the area surrounding the damage. Select a wax stick that color matches the surrounding area. You can either rub the wax stick over the damage or take a little piece of it off with your finger or a plastic card and press it into the damaged area. Remove the excess with a scraper card. Remove any remaining residue with a white, light-duty synthetic pad or a soft, clean cloth. When removing excess, be sure not to pit out the filled area. When using wax sticks on edges, apply as usual by rubbing briskly. 
Level the area by using the Cabinet damage can be repaired with a number of repair products. In this segment, we're going to use quick fill burn-in sticks. These sticks make good quality repairs, but don't require years of practice to become proficient. To begin the repair, color the damage with a background marker. Background markers will not turn dark on bare wood, as do most other markers. We're adding color so the fill will not have a light halo around the edges. Be sure to wipe off any color on the surface. The quick fill burn-in must be softened by heat to enable it to fill the damage properly and efficiently. We'll use a flameless heat gun as a heat source. Pulling the trigger causes the gun to heat. No flame is exposed, but the heat is quite intense, more than enough to soften the quick fill stick. Caution should be taken by the user not to get burned. Bring the quick fill stick near the end of the heat gun. Apply the heat until the exposed area becomes shiny and soft. While the stick is melted, apply it to the damage by rubbing it in with good pressure. We'll use a leveler card to take away the excess burn-in material. Start with the high areas that have accumulated at the edges. Then wear away the excess over the damaged area by pulling the card across it. The goal is to wear it level a little at a time. Too much pressure will result in pulling some burn-in material out of the damage. Very light pressure at the end of the cleaning is appropriate. The color must then be adjusted to blend with the color of the surrounding finish. We're going to use blend-all sticks. One matches the lightest color of the flake of the wood and the other the darker color of the wood, more like the grain color. Start with the lighter color. Use your finger to spread and blend the color. Then add the darker over the lighter. The two will blend to create the correct tone. In order to complete the repair, we have to apply a top coat. In this case, we will use a pre-canalized lacquer of the correct sheen. The lacquer blends the sheen and livens the color of the repair. Epoxy sticks are excellent fillers for finished or unfinished wood. Epoxy sticks are very durable, high viscosity two component fillers. They come with one component wrapped around the other. They are often used for large damaged areas where their strong bonding properties assure a permanent repair. However, they are also used on smaller areas where a burn-in is traditionally used in order to take advantage of their rugged nature. Cut off a piece of the stick as required by the size of the damage. Press the epoxy into a ball in your fingers. Knead it together until the ball has become one color. Press the mixture into the damage and begin to shape it to the contour of the damaged area. A putty knife or plastic card may be used to help shape the epoxy. Pre-wetting the tools with water will keep the epoxy from sticking to the tools. Likewise, wetting your fingers helps you shape the epoxy. Take off as much excess as possible to reduce the amount of sanding required later. Allow the fill to cure and harden. Curing will take about 8 minutes. Sand the area level using the same sandpaper that was last used to smooth the wood, typically aluminum oxide open coat P180A or garnet P150A to smooth the filler. This repair now needs to be colored, grained, and top coated. Epoxy sticks are available in several colors. The colors can be used separately or they can be mixed to create custom matched colors. In order to help you mix accurately and without waste, we've developed a color mixing guide that includes many colors and the formulas for attaining those colors. In our example, the second color in the first column is the closest match. The formula is three parts of color A and one part of color B. The code at the bottom of the chart reveals the formula to be three parts of oak light walnut and one part of walnut. In order to create units to be used as parts, we cut equal size slices from each color. We then cut each of the slices into four equal sections. According to the formula, we take three sections of oak light walnut and one section of walnut in order to attain the target color. The sections are kneaded together and put into place. The remaining sections can be stored and used at a later date.
Background markers contain heavily pigmented touch-up liquids. Special care should be taken to shake them sufficiently to assure a good mixture of the heavy liquids they contain. The valve is activated by inverting the marker and pressing on the nib as with other valve markers. Background markers can also be used to color porous materials that soak in color very quickly. Examples of this would be paper finishes, exposed MDF board, and exposed particle board. These materials turn dark even when colored by light-toned markers. Background markers will not darken on these porous materials. Background markers are also used to apply opaque color over fillers such as epoxy sticks, plastic filler, epoxy putty, and wood repair. They are very effective for use on paper finishes and foil finishes. Here, a background marker is being used to cover an epoxy stick repair in order to create a background color, or in other words, the lightest color seen in the wood. Eventually, a darker color will be added with a blend-all stick. This is a typical sand through created when smoothing a damaged area. Now the color must be restored. Use the proper blend all stick to add the base color or background color. The color is added most effectively by using the edge of the sharpened tip. Caution should be taken not to create a thick application of blend all stick material because a heavy application could cause adhesion problems with the top coat. Often, a much darker colored blend all stick can be used very lightly to create a medium color. Remember, all the areas where blend all sticks are used must be coated with lacquer to adhere the color. Worn edges are a pervasive problem on wood finishes. The easiest way to color a worn edge is to use a touch-up marker. Touch-up markers come in many colors and in two basic systems. The valve type marker is one of the systems commonly used in the industry. The valve is used to regulate the flow and to protect the fluid so the marker will not evaporate over time. The removable nib pushes against the valve to activate the markers. Typically, the markers contain a resin with pigment or a pigment and dye combination as the colorants. The resin will seal and finish upon application. The resin and colorants will yield a semi-transparent colored film. These markers are ideal for worn edges and scratch recoloring. Before using, shake the marker for one minute after you hear the mixing balls begin to make noise. Next, turn the marker with the nib faced upward and depress the nib to release any gas buildup in the tube. Then, turn the marker so the nib faces downward and depress the nib until the fluid reaches the end of the nib. Never activate a marker over carpeting, furniture, or any other object that would be ruined if the tip becomes too saturated and drips. Apply the marker to the scratched surface or raw edge. You may quickly blend the color with a cloth or your finger if desired. Repeat if necessary. Coating is not required, but it may be done. Another method for applying color with pigment powders is the French padding method. French padding liquids are used in conjunction with the pigments and a Frenching pad for this procedure. Frenching liquids come in a variety of viscosities and resins. The thin and medium viscosity versions are most often used for padding color. The high viscosity versions are most often used for French polishing. However, all can be used for padding color. Trace cloth is used to create the pad because it resists giving off lint. Cut a piece about 10 inches square. Fold the cloth carefully, being sure to keep creases off the surface as you fold until it is about 3 inches square. Fold the four corners back into the center of the folded cloth on one side and hold them in that position to create a tight ball on the opposite side. This will be your Frenching pad. Apply padding liquid to the pad. Force the liquid into the pad with your hand or your fingers. The goal is to get the pad sticky. If it's too wet, the pad will wash off the pigment you're trying to get to adhere. If it's too dry, there won't be enough padding liquid to dissolve the pigment and hold it in place. In order to demonstrate the proper tackiness of the pad, we have placed a pad that is too wet in contact with a strip of paper. You can see that it doesn't hold. The second pad grabs at the paper. This pad is at the proper tackiness. The third pad is so dry it has no tackiness at all. 
We are not suggesting that you use paper to test your pad. You will best feel the tackiness when you pad it on your palm. We only use the paper demonstration because we can't communicate the tackiness felt on the hand in the video. Once your padding cloth is tacky, stroke the pad back and forth across the damaged area in a pendulum motion. Never stop your pad on the surface. Immediately after padding, lightly touch the area with your finger. The area should be shiny and tacky, but the tackiness will only last a few seconds. The optimum time to add the powder is during these few seconds of tackiness. Dip your finger into the pigment powders that will match the finish. You may mix a few together on your index finger. Make sure your pad is still damp with the padding liquid. Pad the repair area again with five or six quick strokes to recreate the stickiness. As soon as you stop padding, gently rub the powder into the repair area while it is still tacky. Pat over the powder very lightly at first so as to dissolve the powder in place rather than pushing it to the ends of the stroke. Gradually increase the pressure until the color is locked in. The spot should be shiny. Repeat this process as many times as necessary using the same or different shades of the Blendall powders. After every application, make sure to lock in the color with your pad. The goal is to add a semi-transparent mid-tone color to the repair, not to create an opaque painted look. The color should stay within the patched area and be light enough that it will look right when grained. Graining can be done over the padded area or a coat of sealer may be added before the graining and top coating. To illustrate, we'll grain the spot we've padded so you can see that even though it looks too light without grain, it looks natural with grain added. Mohawk Finishing Products is excited to reveal our new revolutionary coloring tool called the Brush Tip Graining Marker. It's now possible to obtain artist quality results over all types of fills with a marker. That's correct, I said a marker. Let's take a look at some of the physical properties of the brush grainer. The body of the marker holds a felt reservoir filled with a non-bleeding dye formula. Non-bleeding means it won't easily disperse into the top coat and blur your grain lines. What you see is what you get when you top coat the repair. Our proprietary transparent dye formula allows you to layer color without the repair looking muddy. The tip is designed extremely fine and tight. The micro point can create lines not much larger than the width of a human hair. Having it compressed so tight and tapered allows the brush to regain its shape instantly after each stroke. These brush grainers are available in 12 wood tone colors and can transfer color on every fill we have, including fill sticks. Check the right picture and notice how the line stayed sharp after the fill was coated with lacquer. The next example shows the same results on a plain stick fill. Anyone can produce a wide variety of lines as illustrated in this picture. Drawing lines is all well and good, but let's show you what those lines can turn into. This wood chip was totally reproduced on a natural epoxy fill using nothing but these brush grainers. The extremely thin wood tone streaks and grain lines were all created with the micro brush point. We would now like to show some repairs on different fills. The coloring is complete on all these repairs and we'll use a strong lacquer solvent to remove the color and reveal the fill. The first repair is color over an epoxy stick and raw wood. This next repair is over a plain stick burn-in. And this last repair was done over our patented quick fill filler. The coloring was very easily accomplished over all of these fills. We'll show just one to demonstrate the procedure. This plain stick burn in repair demonstrates all the steps necessary to achieve a great repair. You can apply this color directly to the plain stick. We'll use a combination of brush grainers to complete this repair. You can do an entire repair with these brush grainers from background to mid-tones to graining color. I'm applying a light tint of color to the plain stick so it matches the tone of the wood better. 
I wipe over the color to knock down some of the shininess that can sometimes build up when using a dye color. I'll now change to a different brush grainer and start darkening up that background color. Build the color in thin streaks to make it look natural. Multiple colors look more natural than one solid color. Another great feature of these brush grainers is you can build multiple layers of color without a coat of lacquer between each layer. This can save you 15 minutes or more if multiple coats of lacquer were used in the past. After the coloring is complete, spray light coats of lacquer on a repair so the color doesn't blend and flood together. If you start with light coats, it's going to look good. If you flood the repair with top coat, it will blend the colors together. After a few light coats, you can then spray a heavier coat on a repair without affecting the color. These brushes are preloaded with color. This feature is measured to cut your coloring time by 70 to 80 percent when you take into account mixing of the colors, continuously having to load your brush, and cleaning your brush between colors. They're maintenance free. Each brush has its own color and will be able to be used until the color runs out. There'll be no need to clean the brush. Once the color is close, you can start adding some dark grain lines. Use your imagination and only replace what looks natural. We'll only add a few to transition into this repair. Little to no odor. This allows it to be used in any setting. These brush grainers are very portable and easy to carry with you on a job site. You don't have to worry about powders, extra brushes, or liquid to drag along. The grain lines are in place and look very natural, but the body of the fill still looks a little light. You can precisely tint those light areas with a micro tip to get the color dead on. This is why these dyes are great, because it allows you to do that without flooding a lot of color on the area all at once. The tip is so fine, you can put the color exactly where you want it. So if you have a tiny light spot, you can just hit that one spot and make it darker. This repair took 4 minutes and 20 seconds from start to finish. You'll be able to achieve the same results just as easily.